children were told to avoid wild mushrooms. In fact, I remember being warned when I was um, mowing the lawn not to let the lawnmower run over any kind of toadstool that was growing because it could somehow wreck the motor. Those of us in Telluride are fungophiles, people who really love mushrooms, uh, as opposed to most people in North America who are really fungophobes. They're people who fear mushrooms. And part of it has to do with the background uh, where we don't have the, the, the tradition of collecting mushrooms in our forest. We don't have um, relatives that have been collecting mushrooms over generations, as you find in Europe and in Asia. And when you ask people about mushrooms around the, um, the states and such, you find that what mushrooms they know about are the few things that are available in the markets. Sometimes they call them portobellos or cremines, but they're all varieties of the common commercial button mushroom, which is easy and cheap to cultivate. over here we have the big ones which are the portobellas. I was going to get some of the uh, more oriental type of mushrooms in but yeah, we're going to see how that goes. Who lives in here? The mushroom is here. They're sleeping peacefully so they can grow and grow and grow. Just grow deliciously. Then Campbell Kids will pick the best and ask the cow for cream. For Campbell's cream of mushroom soup. It tastes just the cream. It's nourishing, too, and gives you protein, vitamins, and minerals to help you grow. Campbell's soup, Campbell's soup, 21 kinds of Campbell's soup. Lunch or dinner for breakfast, too. Soup every day makes a soup. The mushroom industry has a vested interest against wild mushrooms. The reality is there are only a few really deadly mushrooms and not many more that are poisonous. So it's a matter of learning about them. When I moved to the country, I realized that I was starved for nature. I would, day after day, drop everything and just walk in the woods looking for mushrooms. Just paying attention to anything in nature and forgetting oneself a little bit results in days that pass very quickly. Everybody knows Guru, you know, but... What about that one, too? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> these are mushroom camouflage. The mushrooms don't recognize these as boots, so they don't, they don't hide as well. They think, what's that? It's a funny caterpillar. This is my mushroom knife. It's cheap. I don't have to worry about losing it, and uh, I can take it on the plane. 
Even if they got a whole convoy of SUVs, they gotta work a little harder on this carpool. Do you want to put anything back here, Larry? Uh, just this. Just a little. This is really a great thing, man. Your your fly tackle. Yeah. A little fishing box, and I can get all kinds of species in there, you know. And they come back. You can actually put them on the table. You put them in your pocket or bag, and your bag's like, well, this used to be. <laughs> Mushrooms love the rain, and at this time of the year, the monsoon rains come into the mountains, creating the perfect environment for mushrooms. And with the rain heading west, it looks to be a spectacular weekend for picking mushrooms. So there you have it, mushroom lovers. Get out there and commune with the shrooms. This is like Bolivia here. Like they're going around these hairpin curves. You're on the bus and you see sky. As he goes around the corner, you see sky and then you see like the side wall of this and then you see sky again. Yeah, the guy's got to have some cojones to size of grapefruit to drive those buses. here. We want to check the edge of this type of area for bull leads, and then we'll probably go back up and look for less well-drained areas for chanterelles and stuff like that. Oh, there we go. That's a nice-looking habitat there. We're going to find good stuff all over. There's something. I think we have one of the amicosas here. If this is Agaricus amicosas, what are we going to see? Pink gills when they're young. We definitely have pink gills. They're not gray or white. Okay. Second thing is it cuts white, stains, and then fades to this reddish, orange type color. There you see the stain there again. What smell are we looking for? Right. If you've got a phenolic or library paste smell, we want to avoid that, okay, because our toxic species tend to have that smell. What else we got? Oh, good. Yep. Honeys. The honey mushroom. That's a good eater. We've been eating that all weekend. They're nice and fresh and ready to go. And I see something right up there. Gonna find her. Gonna find her. So just sing out if you find some good stuff and we'll um, come take a look. <laughs> Whenever you got a bolete this ripe and it's already producing spores, this sponge is not something most people are going to want to eat anyway. So I like to take those off because at least they're getting their spores out. Oh, you know, okay. that's, that's the fertile tissue that I just took off. So we'll just leave that to hang around. And that'll stay here. Yeah. And now we'll, this is the other thing we often do with bolete. I often do this before I put 